taking characters from the near 40 years of Transformers, and yep, I'm doing a big exhale and shake of my head as I write this, and releasing them in one line viewed through the same aesthetic lens, you get some pretty big hits and quite a lot of misses. And sometimes the Generation 1 stylings of Legacy lend themselves better to an older character, giving them a new lease on life, but other times it wipes out the character's personality almost completely. The uniform constant of the whole line though seems to be that if a toy or character previously had any major fun gimmicks, they're getting stripped out. Again, sometimes it removes the one thing the original had going for it, and others it's exactly what it needed to pull them out of the awkward mess of engineering and on to becoming a great toy. And I think Transmetal 2 Megatron here sits firmly in that second category. There's a simplicity to this toy that really helps both modes be as good as they can be. Now this was sent to me by a viewer and friend of the show, they know who they are, and I'm very grateful for it because, spoiler warning, I like this thing. Now if you've seen my review of Cryotech, a repaint of the original version of this toy from 1999, you might remember the very unnecessary third vehicle mode, which meant we had a lot of these semi-concealed wheels and other mechanics. And this updated version sidesteps that completely, the toy is so much better for it, it's so sleek and streamlined, it might miss out on the fun wing flapping gimmick or the weird magic 8 ball looking thing in the centre of his chest, but when the actual toy is this slick, those features can go kiss a knot in a tree. Megatron here is pretty huge, I wasn't expecting him to be this big, he's heavy too. There's some great paint applications so the detail doesn't get lost in all that red, and overall the sculpt is marvellous. You know, I've seen folks saying they don't like that head sculpt, but I think it's the perfect mix of what it has to be, that being a mix of menacing and goofy. And of course we have this big dragon tail ponytail, you know fashion was different back then alright. We also have this big whopping dragon head arm with a great amount of articulation points, and yep, you can pose the guy all day and all night. I'd have liked the chest plate at the back to be a bit less obvious, but that's a small point against such otherwise compact majesty. And the transformation isn't as finicky as, say, the Kingdom Beast Wars Megatron, but it's a bit more involved than I expected with you compacting this non-dragon arm inside the chest, you turn it round 90 degrees, and I love the claws extending out of the chest too, how they've come round the chest plate in robot mode. Other than that, you're just hunkering him down on his legs and you spread both the wings, flip the chest piece around his gooch and look at this absolute piece of royalty. It's great how distinct each mode feels, considering you're really just moving around mostly visible parts a little bit. Look how incredible his wingspan is. A huge amount of detail in those wings too. We get this big accessory, the colour of your pee, a big column of fire you can plop into the dragon's mouth, and I dig that a lot. The articulation really shines here in the neck, his little arms, the legs, the wings, it's a treat to look at and mess around with. Something else I really like is how well it all tabs together. It feels sturdy in both modes, something the original just didn't do. So I don't want this review to drag on, you know? <laughs> I, I, have I made that joke already? Probably, you've only got three jokes. I will, stop me if you've heard this one. Uh